Finally, we have reached now uh, the experiment section of a notebook. So today I want to look at two experiments. Uh, one is a sequence to sequence task and the second one is a set anomaly task. So both of these tasks have specific properties I want to show you for transformers and therefore are also designed just to show you uh, the importance beyond NLP of transformers. So we will we'll use a simple transformer encoder as we've seen before and our task is always to class so the first sequence to sequence task so basically we have given a sequence and we want to predict one class for each of the sequence tokens. So specifically here we will have a toy example which I called reverse data set. So what we have I will show below here a short example so you see what I mean. We have an input sequence with digits between 0 and 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. And what we want to do, so we are given here a sequence uh, of length 16 and begins with 9, 6, 2, 0 and so on. And we want to actually that the output predicts the same sequence just in reverse. So our labels will be 9, 0 because that starts here with the last digits 907, 907. So the task seems very simple. We just want to reverse it. But RNNs fail usually on these tasks because if you see the first letter here, the 9, you have to remember it all the way to predict it on the last uh, point again. While in Transformers, you have seen that the distance from one token to each other is 1. So there is no concept of longer ways between two, uh, two aspects in a sequence. How we do that is we just use the simple transformer encoder. We have an input embedding um, and then finally have an output net, which is nothing else than one linear layer using after all the transformer encoder blocks uh, to map then our features to a class again between 0 and 9. Um, as this is when with the output digit we want to predict. We have here again a training function that you have seen already in PyTorch Lightning. We'll not go into detail, but what we are basically doing is just we train the model um, and then test it on a test and a validation set, which comes then below here. So the hyperparameters are chosen to actually show you something important, namely we have one head and one layer. So very simple, however, then we can ensure that actually this attention is explaining what the model is looking at each other. The results of a model, so this has been pre-trained, you can see it is very simple for the model, so it achieves without any problems 100%. But if we now look actually at the tension map, so the tension map as in, if I put in a sequence now, what is uh, our model attending to? So this can then explain us actually what is happening. And there you see, we actually reverse the sequence. So in the x-axis and the y-axis, it's the same sequence, but it shows the x-axis on what is the token attending to compared to all the other sequence. So we see that the input 8, the first token, looks at 9, which is the last one, and so on. So basically you really see that it learns this reverse mapping and you can interpret it very nicely if you look at the attention maps. So in this case, attention is actually explanation, although you cannot always guarantee it if you have a lot of heads, a lot of layers, because at some point it also gets a bit messy. Nevertheless, we will now look at an example where we will try to still interpret um, the attention heads for multiple layers. The task of set anomaly a detection here has one idea. So the idea is that you are, have given a set of elements. So a set compared to a sequence doesn't have an order. Right? So we can say this is element 1 and element 1 becomes before element 2. There's no order in a set. So we have given just an unordered set of n elements and we want to detect this one element in it that doesn't fit to all the other images or all the other elements. So the example we look at is images here. Uh, specifically, I took here an example of Cypher 100, which is thus Cypher 10 with 100 classes. And we are given, for example, here five images. So we will actually use larger sets. But if you're given here a set of five images, 
see that the first four are all with a class of AD shows a fox, while the last one shows a different animal. Therefore, this image would be a anomaly we want to detect, so our classification would be then a softmax of a five um, values, which each value here represents one image, and then we basically want to have a highest um, probability for this image, which is an outlier. Um, in general, this doesn't uh, necessarily need us to define um, to define here categories, right? So this doesn't have to be a fox. We could also have in categories of, well, this is all in the wildness, or it's all green in the background. Um, therefore, we don't need the classes. The classes we will use here just to create our data set. So um, I will use here then the Cypher 100 data set and create anomalies by taking nine images from one set and add one from a different category. So one that just doesn't fit and the network has to identify which one is the anomaly. The big advantage of transformers and multi-head attention on this task is that it can handle sets. Right, so the multi-head attention doesn't have a sense of sequence in the sense that which position it is, except we add positional encoding. And in this, this case, we will not add positional encoding. And then we can ensure that actually the output is permutation equivariant. So if I take my set and shuffle it and put it into the network, it will give me the exact same prediction uh, for which one is the anomaly. And this is very good because otherwise you would have a model which uh, gives you different predictions for different positions where you put the anomaly and that is not something you want in these tasks. So what I do below here is that I um, do something you have seen maybe in assignment one, the bonus question. So I use a pre-trained model uh, a ResNet and push through all the cipher data to extract features from them. The idea is then that the transformer doesn't first have to learn what is the image, what are features of the image and so on. We can just rely on already a pre-trained CNN and use transfer learning to take these features. Let's do it below here. I have to scale up the images because the ResNet has been trained on ImageNet, not Cypher. And Cypher has very small images. The same is with the data means and standard deviation they come from ImageNet. We then remove the classifier, set everything to false and the gradients because we don't want to train the ResNet again, and just run through all of our data and extract the features. This cell can take a little bit longer if you want it yourself, um, but it will store these features once so you don't have to recalculate them all the time. So if we print then our feature maps, you see that you have 50,000 for the training, 10,000 examples for the test set, and 512 is the feature dimension for each image. Then we just split here um, between a validation and a training set. Um, the only trick here is that the validation set uh, should not be biased with classes, so we want to have an equal distribution of classes, so we can also create the sets nicely, otherwise we would have validation set biased towards one category here. The data set, as I said, we don't have to go into detail, it just generates us randomly sets. So it picks one category and takes nine images out of it, and then picks one other category, picks one image out of it, and we want to detect the image which came from the other category than all the other images. Great, then here our data loader um, and visualize an example so you already know how the data set looks like and what the network has to do. So here, for example, we have nine images of trees and then one image which comes from the class volcano. So it would have to detect that the volcano is not a tree in this sense. However, it is not relevant that it actually detects that these are trees and this is a volcano. It's just relevant that it says the volcano doesn't fit to the other images. Same here, for example, a mushroom with phones that they don't match. There you already see that in some cases we will have easy examples, in some cases we have harder examples. So easy examples will be when the classes are very different, so the mushroom and the phones will be a rather easy example. But we have, for example, here trees and we have a, a, another class called palm tree. And there it might be much harder for the network to actually distinguish them. We just have then here a class, uh, again, for predicting. Um, 
the losses. So how we do that is we basically have one output scalar for each image and take a softmax one over the scalars for each, uh, for all the images and have then therefore softmax over 10 images. And this one will be then trained as a prediction from the model. We write here our training function. Again, uh, look at it if you're interested in, but it's basically exactly the same as any of the other training functions we had. And we train our model and check the accuracy. Here we again have a pre-trained model. So therefore the testing, we only have to test, we don't have to train the model, which simplifies the work here and makes it just easier for us to run the notebook. So you see that already with a test score of 94%, the model is fairly good. So it is really able to detect most anomalies. Um, we can also just visualize some examples to see what is happening. So this cell basically proves, if you want to look at it, um, that if you would permute the input, you also permute just the prediction. So it is permutation equivalent. If we now look at some examples and actually also the corresponding attention maps. So you see, for example, here, our first examples of the trees and volcano. Right, so the first attention layers, you see, they actually attend to multiple things. So each image seems to attend to a different image. There's no clear structure. But already in layer two, head three, you see that all the images actually attend to image nine. And in image nine is here our outlier, our anomaly, where you can already interpret, okay, the model actually spots the difference pretty early. Um, layer three here, these three heads basically take an average over all images. Why is that important? Well, because then each image can compare itself to the average of all the others. So there, the volcano image will already see that it is different than the others. And again, you can also see here in this head that it also tends very strongly on image nine. And this is how you could explain the prediction. However, there are also, of course, mistakes, not many, uh, because of the good accuracy of a model. However, for example, here we actually have a mistake in the palm trees. So we have here given nine palm trees and one image from a building, which is made from a similar perspective as a palm tree. So you see that actually this perspective is very similar, and therefore it's harder for the model to spot the difference. You also can see it in the tension heads, because here the tension suddenly looks at picture seven, because this is a white background and everything, which is not similar to the other images, and therefore it doesn't really catch up on the image nine. And this you can also see by output probabilities. So it detected that image nine could be an outlier, but isn't certain enough. Therefore it makes here the mistake and you can kind of see it already in the attention maps. Finally, then as a conclusion, we have seen now how a transformer is built up, how you can train it, um, and what are the important parts and uh, training tips you need to know. So for training, you really make sure you use the learning weight scheduler, the warm up. Um, you can use the positional encoding if you have sequences, and the multi attention attention is just a very general layer, which is very powerful on multiple occasions. So not only NLP, where it might be the most popular right now.